slept out at his grandparents last night, so unlike most mornings where I wake up and Michael and I are kind of tag teaming and rushing and needing to spend the whole morning around Milo's schedule, I got to wake up today peacefully and I slept in a little bit. I was initially going to go pick him up before his nap and bring him home to nap here, but there's been some banging and construction sounds happening, so I'm keeping him at the grandparents for his nap and then I'm gonna go pick him up. With all this newfound time in the morning, I realized that I do wanna do a little bit of meal prepping for our family this week. It's currently a Monday as I'm shooting this and on Thursday evening, we are going to another wedding in Miami. Michael's college friend is getting married. Because it's a short week here, I don't wanna go overboard with the meal prep and I was literally just about to leave the house to go buy groceries to put this together, but then I opened my freezer and I realized that I had so much stuff in my freezer that I could pull from and basically shop from my own freezer. That's one of my favorite things about the meal prep that I've been doing is just learning how to stock stuff up in my freezer, both cooked stuff and raw stuff. So a lot of stuff that I buy now is just frozen stuff that I'll do like a big bulk shop in a month and keep it in my freezer and then shop from my own freezer. And a lot of the stuff that I cook, when I'm cooking like a batch meal, I'll make a lot more than I could possibly feed my family in a week and then I'll freeze a decent amount of it. So I had a lot of stuff in the freezer, like a kimchi thing that I made that I moved up to the fridge to defrost for the week. I had salmon that I'm about to pop in the oven here. This recipe is so amazing. It's basically two tablespoons of olive oil and then a lot of different spices. So I'm gonna try to rattle it off by memory, but it's like two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, two teaspoons of paprika, one teaspoon of chili powder, if you want it spicy, and um, some sea salt. And that's what's rubbed onto this salmon. Like you mix the olive oil with all those spices, get it into a paste, and then I rubbed it on. I actually only did it on these two. And this third one, I just put um, some paprika and avocado oil for Milo. I also had some cucumbers, cherry tomatoes, and extra red onion. So I made a little salad of those ingredients. I'll show you what I have going on right here. Cherry tomatoes red onion, cucumber. In the interim time, I popped the salmon in. And then I also made pasta, and I wanted to make it a little bit different than how I typically make it. So I had in the freezer bags of frozen corn and frozen peas, so I just dumped that in. I'm also gonna make some of these falafels for Milo, if I have time. And then I've just defrosted some of these like sausage and meatball things that are from Belinsky and are gluten-free. I think I'm just gonna roast these up in the oven too. Oh, hold on. Red onion done. This just had the paprika and salt. Yum. Honestly, I'm just so happy that I store stuff in my freezer because now I can eat. We're on the way to close on our house. Okay, I'm gonna talk to you later because we'll do a little chit chat soon. Okay, so this is the mortgage that we're gonna record on the land records. Um, you need to keep it insured, you need to maintain it, you can't do anything illegal. The most important thing is that you make your payment. We own a house. So we signed all the papers and the deed is done. How many signatures do you think we had to give today? We each probably signed 50 times. Yeah. I've got to is hand that... it to Michael. He managed so much of that mortgage and loan approval process and all the dealings with the lawyers. And oh my gosh, I don't know what I would do without you. Ditto. Got anything else to say, Mr. Talkative, Mr. Chatty Cathy? <laughs> no, I'm just excited to have a house and excited to do it all with you. Love you. Now turn the tape off. Now turn the tape off. Let's go. 
<laughs> we drove to visit my parents the night before so that we could leave Milo with them while we went in the morning to visit the new house, to do a walkthrough, and then to go to the legal team's office and sign all the paperwork, of which there was a lot. And now we're back at my parents' house and we're just gonna spend the day doing a little bit of work here and then go back to the city tonight. We actually sent our nanny in an Uber to come to my parents' house. So she's still here for the day watching Milo. And I actually think my parents and Milo and the nanny went out for a mall trip. So they're all at the mall. <laughs> I've been listening to this finance podcast. It's called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. It's absolutely my favorite podcast of the moment. And it's this financial expert who brings couples and people onto his podcast who share their issues that they have with money, whether it's they're an overspender and they're spending outside of their means or they're an underspender and they have a very negative scarcity money mindset and he kind of helps them work through that. I just love the podcast. It's like a voyeuristic experience into other people's lives and finances. That host, Ramit, is always talking about the hidden costs of owning a house. I think he himself is actually like kind of against home ownership. So we definitely disobeyed him and bought a house. <laughs> but he's right in that he's always talking about the hidden costs, like things that you don't factor in when you go ahead and purchase a house and you don't think of all the other things you're gonna have to pay for that come along with owning a house. We have not yet actually gotten to the house, like moved into it, which we're not gonna be doing until the summertime. So I don't have firsthand confirmation of that yet, although I know it's gonna be true. But what I do know is that there are so many hidden actions that go into purchasing a house that you just think like, okay, we're gonna take out a more mortgage and close on the house. And you just don't realize how much upfront work legally and financially and just setting up the interest rate and locking in your interest rate and working with a lawyer to share all of your financial assets and wiring the money to the people and getting a loan from the bank. And there are just so many hoops and hurdles that we had to jump through before we could sit down at that desk and sign the paperwork and get the keys to the house. And if I'm being honest, like Michael and I have a division of labor in our relationship and the way we've divided things up, he manages a lot of those logistical tasks in our lives so a lot of that work did fall on him whereas the actual uh, searching for the house and finding the house and coordinating all of our interactions with the realtor and then the design process and all of that is my area of interest and expertise so that's falling on me but i've been watching michael over the past five six months and this man has been working hard to get us to the place we were at this morning where we signed those papers. And for me, it was kind of like I walked through the door and just give me a pen, Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. which is nice. But I do want to acknowledge how much work Michael did and how much went into this. But I'm going to get to work right now. I've got a YouTube video going up and I'm actually taking a trip the next two weekends or not this weekend, but the weekend after and the weekend after I'm going away. One is a wedding and one is a trip with a couple of mom friends. So just got so much to do. I'm going to go get into my work zone and I'll talk to you soon. All done? No. Oh, okay. More French toast? Mmm, no. yummy. No. More. You can bite the crust. It's a little hard, but you can bite it. Almost time to go for a walk with Mama. We're gonna take a walk. We're gonna see Uncle Robert. Baba. Baba. Robert. Then you're gonna take a nap. Then we have Charlotte's birthday. Then we play with mommy and daddy, and that's tonight. Then tomorrow, we wake up and we drive, 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 drive to the new house. You're gonna get to see your new house, see your brand new room. You're gonna see Dee Dee, Pop Pop, Nona, Grandpa, Aunt A, Uncle Ziggy, Auntie Juju, and Uncle Rico. So we have a busy weekend. Do you want some water? No. no. Okay. Do you want some coffee? Uh. Coffee. This is mommy's. I shouldn't have offered it. I'm sorry. Mama. Kiss for mommy. Thank you. <laughs> dip dip. Do you want to dip dip your French toast in some yogurt? Yeah. Can you do dip dip? Thank you. Yummy. So yummy. Mom. Mommy's gonna do the dishes while you eat.
take Milo's water. Bye bye. Okay, so Lucy just told me not to make her weenus look crunchy. I'm gonna vomit. Do you guys know what a weenus is? Yes, everyone knows what a weenus is. Okay, well, a weenus is this part of your arm. And mine's actually large. I have a large weenus. <laughs> She's got a huge weenus! In, in middle school, did people like come up to you and pinch your weenus? Yes! <laughs> and is mine big? Yeah! <laughs> Okay, so I have a, a big weenus, and we're about to take photos of my tattoo. Oh, my weenus. Which is right here. Probably isn't the first time YouTube is seeing it. However, it might be the first time you're seeing it in a vlog. But I got a little M. It stands for Mama, Milo, and Michael. And it's not permanent. It's going to be disappearing in 9 to 15 months. And it's already starting to fade a little. Like, it's not quite as dark as it was, right? Yeah. But anyway, we're about to take some photos of it. So I still can't believe you did it. I figured you could watch. I will make sure her weenus does not look crunchy. Mm -hmm. Should I put it in a low pony? Yeah. With that thing? Yeah. I copied you. You were wearing a low pony when I walked in, so I put my hair oh. in a low pony. <laughs> I saw Lucy Pink wearing a weenus and a low pony. Let me see. <gasps> I burned my waffle. Oh no. Hair? I guess down. Yeah. Can't Can you on. move those tins? They look ugly. Oh, horrible. Let's see, you remember when you stuck this to your face and you got a... It wasn't that, it was something else. No, it was this. It wasn't <laughs> that. <laughs> it was the thing that you squeeze and you suck. No, I'm telling you it was this. It was not. That doesn't stick to skin. Try it. Go. I literally watched it happen. Or it was a squeezing <laughs> blue owl. It was blue. <laughs> Okay, now angle toward me a little. Other way. Away from me, sorry. How's my weenus? It's looking crunchy as fuck. Oh, those are cute. Like the, the concept, not my face. Yeah, give me some hair flip movement. Hell yeah. Put your arm down. Cute, love these. Yes, oh my God, that's really cute, Lou. <laughs> oh, my hair looks so good for being six days postpartum. <laughs> <laughs> six days postpartum. Do you know what I'm saying? Hey, six days post wash. <laughs> okay, we we got it. We like drink it out of Mama's water. Oh. <laughs> da. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>